Savitri, Book 7, The Book of Yoga, Canto 6, Nirvana and the All-Negating Absolute. Thou shalt be one with God's bare reality and the miraculous world he has become and the diviner miracle still to be when nature, who is now unconscious God, Translucent grows to the eternal's light. Her seeing, his sight. Her walk, his steps of power. And life is filled with a spiritual joy. And matter is the spirit's willing bride. Consent to be nothing and none. Dissolve time's work. Cast off thy mind, step back from form and name, annul thyself, that only God may be. Thus spoke the mighty and uplifting voice, and Savitri heard. She bowed her head and mused, plunging her deep regard into herself in her soul's privacy in the silent night. Aloof and standing back detached and calm, a witness of the drama of herself, a student of her own interior scene, she watched the passion and the toil of life and heard in the crowded thoroughfares of mind, the unceasing tread and passage of her thoughts. All she allowed to rise that chose to stir, calling, compelling not, forbidding not, she left all to the process formed in time, and the free initiative of nature's will. Thus, following the complex human play, she heard the prompter's voice behind the scenes, perceived the original libretto's set and the organ theme of the composer force. All she beheld that surges from man's depths, the animal instincts prowling mid life's trees, the impulses that whisper to the heart, and passion's thunder chase sweeping the nerves. She saw the powers that stare from the abyss and the wordless light that liberates the soul, but most her gaze pursued the birth of thought, a franchised from the look of surface mind, she paused not to survey the official case, the issue of forms from the office of the brain, its factory of thought sounds and soundless words and voices stored within, unheard by men, its mint and treasury of shining coin. These were but counters in mind's symbol game, a gramophone's discs, a reproduction's film, a list of signs, a cipher, and a code. In our unseen, subtle body, thought is born, or there it enters from the cosmic field. Oft from her soul stepped out a naked thought, luminous with mysteried lips and wonderful eyes. Or from her heart emerged some burning face and looked for life and love and passionate truth, aspired to heaven, 
or embraced the world, or led the fancy like a fleeting moon across the dull sky of man's common days, amidst the doubtful certitudes of earth's law, to the celestial beauty of faith gave form, as if at flower prints in a dingy room laughed in a golden vase one living rose. A thaumaturgist sat in her heart's deep, compelled the forward stride, the upward look, till wonder leaped into the illumined breast and life grew marvelous with transfiguring hope. A seeing will pondered between the brows, thoughts, glistening angels, stood behind the brain in flashing armor, folding hands of prayer, and poured heaven's rays into the earthly form. Imaginations flamed up from her breast. Unearthly beauty, touches of surpassing joy, and plans of miracle, dreams of delight. Around her navel lotus, clustering close, her large sensations of the teeming worlds streamed their dumb movements of the unformed idea. Invading the small sensitive flower of the throat, they brought their mute unuttered resonances to kindle the figures of a heavenly speech. Below, desires formed their wordless wish, and longings of physical sweetness and ecstasy translated into the accents of a cry, their grasp on objects and their clasp on souls. Her body's thoughts climbed from her conscious limbs and carried their yearnings to its mystic crown, where nature's murmurs meet the ineffable. But for the mortal, prisoned in outward mind, all must present their passports at its door. Disguised, they must don the official cap and mask or pass as manufacturers of the brain, unknown their secret truth and hidden source. Only to the inner mind they speak direct, put on a body and assume a voice, their passage seen, their message heard and known, their birthplace and their natal mark revealed, and stand confessed to an immortal sight, our nature's messengers to the witness soul. Impenetrable, withheld from mortal sense, the inner chambers of the spirit's house disclose to her their happenings and their guests. Eyes looked through crevices in the invisible wall and through the secrecy of unseen doors there came into mind's little frontal room thoughts that enlarged our limited human range, lifted the ideal's half-quenched or sinking torch or peered through the finite at the infinite. A sight opened upon the invisible and sensed the shapes that mortal eyes see not, the sounds that mortal listening cannot hear, the blissful sweetness of the intangible's touch. The objects 
that to us are empty air, are there the stuff of daily experience and the common pabulum of sense and thought.